New GOP primary polling has Nikki Haley polling ahead of Ron DeSantis, but still far behind former President Donald Trump. Trump is in the lead at 73 percent post-Iowa, while he was at just 69 percent pre this week's Iowa caucus. Nikki Haley is taking 14 percent, whereas she had 12 percent before Iowa. And DeSantis has 12 percent up one percentage point from where he stood before the Iowa caucus. Florida Congressman Matt Gates had this to say about some voters in the Republican Party. What I could tell you is like for every Karen we lose, there's a there's a Julio and a Jamal ready to sign up for the MAGA movement. And that abodes well for our ability to be more diverse and to be more durable as we head into. Not Matt Gates gatekeeping the Republican Party. Uh, I think that they have the Karens on lock. I don't know if he needs to say that. I thought that uh, among white women voters, Republicans were doing quite well. I don't know if he's alienating some Karens by saying that. Who is he talking about, Amber, when he says Karens there? Am I missing something? Yeah, he's talking about suburban white women, which have sort of left the party uh, during the Trump phenomenon. And this is a demographic that votes pretty consistently. Um, So they've been trying to figure out ways to keep them in the party. Um, A lot of them are quite turned off by Trump's rhetoric. A lot of them are pro-choice. And so in the aftermath of the Dobbs decision, it was sort of, uh, I guess, the prevailing theory that it was suburban white women and young people who had cost Republicans this red wave in the 2022 midterm elections. But just some basic math for Matt Gates: you can't just abandon suburban white women if you want to win elections. Um, if you're talking about the Julios and Jamals, as he put it, black men and Hispanic men, then you're looking at about 15% of the population. White women make up something like 35 to 40% of the population. Uh, So you're not going to make up numbers just by having a slight increase in the percentage of black or Hispanic male voters for Trump um, if a bunch of white women flee the party. So just from a, a campaign strategy standpoint, this this is not the right way to go, I think. I mean, obviously, Republicans want to appeal to a broad working class coalition, but you shouldn't view any voter as disposable. It's a huge mistake. Yeah, that sounds right to me. That's something that the Democratic Party has done as well. I think it's a unique situation this election because you have, you know, Trump getting around 73 percent. But then when you look at what Nikki Haley and uh, DeSantis are getting right now, if those voters ultimately don't vote for Donald Trump in the general election and they go for an RFK Jr. type candidate, an independent, I don't really know that we'll see many people go over to vote for Joe Biden. We might see them sit it out, though. I think that would be detrimental for the Matt Gates faction. And that's exactly why you can't write any voters off if you intend to win win elections. And I think this kind of a strategy could cost Donald Trump this election. Based on how we saw things go in 2020, he didn't get a lot of votes where he needed them in order to win. He didn't get the necessary votes in in states. I think he just counted that he would win again. And in counties that he he counted would be voting for him again. That's something that, you know, Democrats have made that mistake as well. But this time around, when you have such a viable, you know, third, fourth party candidate, you've got to be way more careful about how you run and make sure that if you have an alienating candidate like Donald Trump, the strategy brings some of those formerly alienated voters in. Yeah, I think the good news for Trump is that the polling out of Iowa did suggest that Republicans were more likely to sort of vote in line with their party if Trump were the nominee versus someone like DeSantis or Haley. They were both sitting at about 30 percent of Republican voters who would defect and ultimately not vote for them in the general election versus about 19 percent who said that they would not ultimately vote for Donald Trump. So if it's a comparison game, Trump is in good hands there in terms of being able to unite the party and bring everyone back into the fold. Um, But that being said, there is a lot of bad blood between DeSantis, hardcore DeSantis supporters and members of the DeSantis campaign and the Trump campaign. Um, Members or surrogates for Trump have sort of suggested that they're keeping a list of who went to work for DeSantis. They have branded some of them traitors. And there's actually this amazing article in Politico this morning about the failures of the DeSantis campaign, calling it one of the worst in history. And this is from a couple of GOP strategists. And they say that one of the problems is that the candidate did not match the hype. In person, he was a diminutive politician. The campaign introduced him to the nation as a bright but socially awkward introvert, a nerd who did not enjoy people, which was a problem since voters tend to be people. (laughs) 
which is just sort of an all time line. Um, but I mean, we've been talking about the DeSantis campaign on this show for a long time and it's and it's many failures from the rollout on Twitter spaces to the fact that they had developed this major ground game in late primary states when it wasn't even clear that he would be able to compete in Iowa, New Hampshire. And although Nikki Haley took a lot of heat last week for saying that it was a two man race after Iowa, she wasn't incorrect. DeSantis is basically skipping New Hampshire and going straight to South Carolina because he knows he doesn't have a shot in the open primary with independents and Democrats. And Nikki Haley is polling much better there, about seven to 10 points behind the former president. Now, to be clear, I don't think either of them have a chance. Um, calling it a two man race even then is generous. Uh, but it looks like I think both DeSantis and Haley after New Hampshire are probably going to be dead in the water. Right. I love the point about the personality. It's so important for a candidate to be likable. So many of these guys go in their commercials and they put on their commercial clothes where they dress up like average people. And they're like, hey, I'm Ted Cruz. You just walked in my house on a Sunday. We're having breakfast. This is what I do. Normal people stuff. Brand new fishing equipment. It's weird watching them cosplay as normal people. You can just tell when a candidate lives a pretty normal life and is relatable. So many candidates trying to be personable and trying to be relatable has turned off so many voters than if they were just themselves, even if that's not a particularly likable person. I think people appreciate someone being genuine over someone being fake and trying to be personable. I would rather you be unpersonable and just genuine and we wouldn't have to cringe every time you get on stage. That's Ron DeSantis for me. It's Nikki Haley a little bit too, honestly. But I think in my heart of hearts, I'm just not hopeful that this election will have an outcome that makes me happy no matter what it is, no matter what way you cut it out of all of the candidates running. I really think we're going to need someone who brings people together all across the country behind a populist message, behind a message of the elites are running our society and the economy, frankly, for their benefit and to our detriment. And anyone who's running for public office that is not running on a policy platform that addresses and changes that, or at least saying that message, I just don't think it's gonna be a candidate that is gonna win a convincing majority that is enough to, to enact the change we need to see that will make people say, wow, I'm glad I voted for them. I think almost every single person that was a young person that voted for Joe Biden, at some point he's disappointed them for one reason or another. I think it's a very small group of people that are satisfied with their votes in this country and are happy to vote for the same candidate for, for another term. It's just a very small portion of voters. And so I think until we get that candidate, I'm just going to be dissatisfied with every election result. So watching the Republican Party kind of eat itself and fight within itself, you know, it doesn't even bring me any joy because I'm not hopeful with the Democrats. <laughs> either. Yeah, I think a lot of people felt disappointed in Trump's first term, too, especially on um, issues like immigration and crime. I mean, immigration in 2019, he unleashed a bunch of executive orders that did a really great job at securing the border, but he didn't do much to change the legal immigration system, which is something that people were really hopeful for. He issued a couple of temporary pauses during the pandemic, but didn't really go full bore um, in the way that that was hopeful. I mean, his biggest achievement basically during his, his tenure was the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, which didn't even permanently um, allow for tax cuts for the middle and working class. Those had to be renewed while the ones that were in there for the wealthy were permanent, which was so idiotic. And thanks a lot, Paul Ryan. Um, and then I want to go back to your point about politicians being genuine and how important that is, because you mentioned Nikki Haley, of course. She was caught uh, twice sort of insulting voters and suggesting that this is all a game to her. She said first that New Hampshire was there to correct the votes of Iowa. And then in explaining that comment said that she loves the primary process because you go from Iowa and New Hampshire and you change personalities and then you go down to South Carolina, which brings it home. Um, and it was just bizarre. Um, and I think that's why people like Trump so much is that, yeah, he's a mega rich, you know, New York real estate guy, and he doesn't pretend to be anything else. He is on the golf course a lot. He plays tennis and he wears suits pretty much everywhere else. 90% of the time that you see him, he is in a suit and he stands in this weird domineering way. And he has the very emphatic hand gestures. It's just, I, 
I don't know another candidate in either party that is like that. I mean, I guess Biden kind of is because he's losing track of where he is. And so inevitably his real self has to come out because he can't even follow a basic script. But um, just in terms of like the last decade, I've never seen a politician like Trump that just genuinely is himself um, in the way that he is on the campaign trail. And it's obviously something that resonates with a lot of people, even those who don't necessarily relate to his station in life, but just appreciate that he's being authentic. Yeah, definitely resonates with voters in Iowa, which we saw this past week. And I think the Iowa caucus, something that Nikki Haley said, insulting the crowd of people uh, that she had to then uh, address her statement to, where she said, it's time for Iowa to, to pass the torch, maybe have the caucus or the first vote in New Hampshire instead. I think if you're an Iowan, you like being the first caucus. I'm in Iowa now, love the great people of Iowa, but there was a case to be made there by Nikki Haley or anyone running that there's really this path dependency of if you do well in Iowa, people like picking winners and are more likely to vote for you in the next states. And Iowa, love it, not representative of the entire country, having another state start for the presidential contest and vote first and potentially pick someone different could be good for the country, but we are living in a reality where Donald Trump did extremely well in Iowa, and he's going to stand to benefit in the following states and the other candidates that are not popular in Iowa, but may have been in other states, are, are it's kind of to their detriment that Iowa goes first. So we are living in that political reality now as well. We're going to, as always, continue to follow this race as it shapes and unfolds. More rising after this.